And I got my middle name from somebody who obviously didn't think I'd ever run for president. <laughs> If I had uh, to name my greatest strength, I guess it would be my humility. <laughs> greatest weakness, uh, it's possible that I'm a little too awesome. <laughs> One other thing, I have never, not once, put lipstick on a pig, or a pit bull, or myself. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, that's one for you. I mean... Who would have thought that a cross-dressing mayor from New York City would have a tough time running the uh, Republican nomination? It's, uh, it's shocking. <laughs> that was a tr tough primary you had there, John. Anyway, that's, uh... anyway, that's who I really am. But in the spirit of full disclosure, there are a few October surprises you'll be finding out about in the coming weeks. First of all, my middle name, it's not what you think, it's actually Steve. That's right, Barack Steve Obama. Here's another revelation. Uh, John McCain is onto something. There was a point in my life when I started palling around with a pretty ugly crowd. I've got to be honest. Uh, these guys were serious deadbeats. They were lowlifes. They were unrepentant. No good punks. That's right. I've been a member of the United States Senate. <laughs> Come to think of it, John, I swear I saw you at one of our meetings. <laughs> but I know Senator McCain agrees that some of the rumors out there are getting a bit crazy. Uh, I mean, uh, Rupert, the other day, Fox News actually accused me of fathering two African-American children in wedlock. <laughs> By the way, John, I'm just curious, is Fox News included in the media? Because I'm always hearing about this love. Just curious. Then at one of these campaign rallies, someone in the crowd started yelling, No Obama, announcing to everyone in the room that I shouldn't be the Democratic nominee because there were far more qualified candidates. I really wish Joe Biden hadn't done that. But, At least uh, we've moved past the days when the main criticism coming from the McCain campaign was that I'm some kind of celebrity. I have to admit that that really hurt. I got so angry about it, I punched a paparazzi in the face on my way out of Spago's. I'm serious. I even spilled my soy chai latte all over my chitsu. It was really embarrassing. <laughs> But, in all seriousness, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that I could make it tonight, and I'm honored to be among such wonderful public servants. Uh, I want to especially uh, say a word of thanks to, to Senator McCain. Uh, we are in the midst of a tough battle right now, uh, and uh, American politics at the presidential level is always tough. But uh, I've said before, and I think it bears repeating, that uh, there are very few of us who have served this country with the same dedication uh, and honor and distinction as Senator McCain, and I'm glad to be sharing the stage with him tonight as I am during the course of this nomination. And before I close, I'd like to recognize one such servant who's not with us here tonight, uh, but who was mentioned earlier, and that's uh, our good friend Tim Russert. I know that Luke and Maureen are here, and I, I know that Tim enjoyed these dinners very much, uh, and I also know how much he would have enjoyed covering this election. And I know that uh, John and I would have uh, been quaking in our boots uh, preparing for our appearances on Meet the Press. And uh, his absence is not just a personal loss for so many who knew him and loved him, but a profound loss for the country. And we continue to miss him very much. You know, the fact that each, no, uh, each October, 
in the closing weeks of a hard-fought campaign. People of all political persuasions can come to this dinner and share a meal and honor the work of this foundation. Underscores the reality that no matter what differences or divisions or arguments we're having right now, we ultimately belong to something bigger and more lasting than a political party. We belong to a community. We share a country. We are all children of God. And in this country, there are millions of fellow citizens, our brothers and sisters, uh, who need us very much, especially now. We are being battered by a very serious economic storm. And for many Americans, it's only deepened the quiet storms they've been struggling through for years. Beyond the walls of this hotel, on the streets of one of the greatest cities in the wealthiest nation on earth, there are men and women and children who've fallen on hard times and hard luck, who can't find work or even a job that pays enough to keep a roof over their heads. And some are hanging on just by a thread. Scripture says God creates us for works of service. We are blessed to have so many organizations like this one and the Catholic, the Catholic diocese that perform these acts of God every day. But each of us also have that responsibility. Each of us has that obligation, especially now. So no matter who we are or what we do, what I believe is each of us in this room asks for and hopes for and prays for uh, enough strength and wisdom to do good and to seek justice and play our small part in building a more hopeful and compassionate world for the generations that will follow. Before Al Smith was a candidate who made history, he was a man who made a difference, a man who fought for many years to give Americans nothing more than a fair shake and a chance to succeed. And he touched the lives of hundreds of thousands, of millions as a result. Simply put, he helped people. And that's a distinction we can all aspire to and we can all achieve, young or old, rich or poor, Democrat or Republican or independent. And I have no doubt that if we come together at this moment of crisis with this goal in mind, America will meet this challenge and weather this storm and, in the words of Al Smith, walk once more in eternal sunshine. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you.